Hey guys and welcome back to another video. Today we want to talk about the Clan Wars season in July for Tribe Gaming. I will show you guys as many attacks as possible and obviously over the next days and well explain a bit more on how we approach the season and obviously now let's get into it. How exactly did we finish the season? We finished with 352 stars which isn't too bad but once again since I want to highlight this we had one free win, which is not normal, obviously. So, yeah, Krypton tried to drop. I had this already in a specific, like in a special video. So, if you guys want to check that out, make sure to do so. But for now, we do not concentrate on that too much. But I just want to say this in this video, otherwise, people will like go crazy about it. So, we had one for, uh, 45 free win, but except that we did overall really good um, in the other wars. We, we had overall, like I said, the third war was the free win. We had the kind of like a hole in the middle of the week, like 37, uh, 38, 38. But then we climbed back up with like a 41 and a 43 finish. So that was pretty good, especially because the last team made it really close for us. They had like 39 stars, which I guess against most of the other teams uh, would have been a free win. So... That was not too bad, so let's get into it. And before, or actually before we're getting into the tags, one quick look at the leaderboards right now uh, in Tribe. Hus as well, big shout out to the guy. Killing every single base with, with Zap Lado, so crazy attacks. I went perfect as well. I had a couple of nice Zap Wind Judge hybrid attacks, which I will show you guys in another video. And then yeah, I did a bit worse with my second account, but still. Overall, really good season, worked really well. Maxi, shout out as well to him because he had only one fail as well. He was only six uh, in six wars, so that's why. And yeah, nice season overall. I will show you guys a couple of attacks and just because I just recently mentioned Maxi, I will show the first attack just of him. And I want to highlight in this video Zap Lalo once again. And not because like the strategy itself or like, guys, you can zap everything like this, which I already did. No, on this time, we want to specifically take a look at how you guys can abuse the zap even if you're not getting too much value so on this attack he's getting or he's trying to get because he's missing the earthquake but he's trying to go for one wizard tower clan castle single fern town air defense that's not too much you're not getting a single expo you're not getting a single scatter shot you're not getting any enemy heroes and you're not getting the enemy eagle so if it's coming down to the value that's basically nothing, but it's all about the entire plan. And sometimes like on this plan, it's all about the follow up, like the hero part. And that's in quite a bit of the attacks, which we did, because I think we were pretty creative when it came, when it came down to the, to the hero part. So let's take a look at this one. On the right side, he has his Royal Champion taking out the scatter, which means, well, he didn't zap the scatter, but he took it down with, the, with his Royal Champion. Now on the left side, you uh, guys saw the queen took out the enemy scatter shot as well, like the second one. And now she's taking out the enemy royal champion, another inferno tower, and already 40% or like even more of the base is gone. Even though the zap value wasn't too crazy, with this zap, he was able to kind of enable his heroes to get crazy value, which you guys always have to consider as well. It's not always about like, yeah, I can zap the Eagle Clan Castle and two scatter shots together and this base is ripped. No, you can force the strategy sometimes when you're getting creative with your heroes. So what is he doing next? Next, he started off with his Lalo. And like I said, since he had already so many percentages, the town was activating kind of early. And one thing which is nice for him is that he has just the blimp to make sure that he's getting the town hall and there's a safe blimp in there which means barbarians, super goblins and then one dragon just to make sure that the town is actually dropping. Then there's one dragon in there which is flying over to the enemy queen to make sure that this enemy queen is getting taken down. Meanwhile his Lalo is getting into the back end defenses and this is a crazy overkill. Really nicely done to Eve Maxi and it just highlights how creative you can be with this strategy as soon as you're getting like as soon as you're knowing the limits of your heroes so nicely done to him and now let's take a look at a couple of more attacks because like i said overall the entire week we had so many zap lalo attacks it was crazy i think overall like 70 percent of our attacks at least were zap lalo and this is in champion one so right now only the 0.00001% of the uh, top players, not of the entire players, just of the top players, 
have even bases which can properly defend against Zablalo. That's pretty crazy to consider that. So let's take a look at the next couple of attacks and we're going actually back in the wars, which means now we're in war number two and we're taking a look at number 12 first. That's one of my attacks. And on this one, I tried kind of the similar thing. Like you want to enable your heroes, which obviously means, yes, you can have Zap value as well. I was, for example, going for the enemy clan castle, for the enemy queen and warden, which is not too bad. Like whenever you're able to zap the enemy queen, it's kind of nice. But to be honest, that's not the craziest value you can get overall. So it's nice to have, but it's not like, okay, with this zap value, the base is already triple. So what I did over here is as soon as I was able to zap the clan castle, I would do a sui for the bottom side. And what this means is I have my king walking around the bottom side, which means like he's going something like this because I'm forcing him in with those loons and with this baby dragon and the royal champion, which are taking out like the top side and the top scatter shot. I can make sure that my king is walking to this side. I can let him die over there and then I can wall break my queen in to get the enemy uh, eagle and the enemy royal champion. And as soon as that's taken out, when we take a look then at the value we got is... Well, we took down the enemy queen, we took down the enemy royal champion, which is already a huge thing, taking down two heroes. And then we took down the eagle, we took down a scatter shot, we took down another air defense, and we took down a wizard tower. So, a crazy amount of things which got down just because we zapped the clan castle and the queen together and made sure that there's no clan castle which can distract our heroes. As soon as that's the case, I'm just starting once again, kind of similar with uh, Maxi just starting off with the Lalo. I we already predicted the Tornado Trap being over there because, well, it's kind of like a nice Yeti Blimp location. So we were figuring out, okay, that's a pretty obvious uh, Tornado Trap spot. So that's why I waited with my, uh, with my Blimp. And now I'm standing in the Blimp because I'm kind of safe. There are no Black Mines. Now the Blimp is reaching the Town Hall. There are actually Super Goblins in there which are taking down the Town Hall. So I can save a Warden ability which is pretty important because you guys can see on the back end there are two freaking multi inferno towers. So this is why I need my um, this is why I need my warden ability for the back end using the freeze right now just to make sure that the, uh, the loons are staying safe. And as soon as my warden is in range of all of the all of the loons, we can just get started with the warden ability, the last remaining spells like another free spell, and this is another triple for us. So like I said, be creative with your heroes and then you have no problems with Lalo. Obviously you need to train the Lalo drop a little bit, but once again, the main thing about the strategy is kind of the hero part. And if, we are, if you are creative about that and like you know what you should go for, like regarding when you should go for the town hall, when should you go for other things and so on. So on this one, it was another triple for us. And if you guys are thinking like, okay, those are maybe just bad bases. Um, well, we had a couple of bases. I think most of you guys did. If you were kind of high up there in the legend, uh, in the um, demo league, and the next base, even though it's number fifteen, is like another qualifier base. And I think that's another base from Origin. I think they use it against us as well. Those guys modified the base a little bit. So what they did is they uh, turned all of the single inferno towers in multis, or like at least two of them, which means it should be a little bit harder for Lalo. But still, we're doing the Zap Lalo. And on this one, once again, we try to get creative on the heroes, even though this is a more simple approach because this time we're just going for the Town Hall, to be honest. So what I'm doing over here, I'm using the Zap or like the Lightning Spawn on the right side of the, of the base, which means we took down the right scatter, the enemy queen and the clan castle. And since I'm greedy, I want to go for the enemy scatter as well. So this is why we have our Sui on the left side. We took already down on the left side a couple of um, <clears throat> buildings over there with our Baby Dragon to force hero the heroes inside. And now everything is, should go to the town or at least um, the king or the queen. One of those two, the king is walking to the outside. It's going through a wall, which is actually not too bad, to be honest. And now we have the queen ability for the town hall. Town hall is down and that's everything we wanted to get. But to be honest, since my king went through the wall, which wasn't planned at all, um, I now have access to the enemy's multi inferno tower and because we dropped the earthquake in, into the right spot, the inferno tower was already low and we were able to take that down. Now we're sitting in the slammer and one of the things is always you need a plan for the enemy heroes. My plan for the enemy hero, in this case the enemy royal champion, 
was just placing my slammer over here and having two dragons in there. The slammer is opening and now we have the eagle getting targeted on that. We have the enemy royal champion and now, now the wizard tower as well. All of those defenses are now locked onto my dragons and they are tanking perfectly for my loons. Now the next thing is just to haste or like to boost my loons into the eagle um, part to make sure that they're staying out of range. I'm losing a couple of loons to the eagle shots but still I have the warden ability left. I have two freezes and two haste so I have tons of uh, possibilities left to get rid of the last remaining defenses. Now I'm getting into the base with a couple of more loons on the outside. Those troll test dots were a little bit annoying um, for the Lalo pathing, but well, it still worked in the end for me because once again, we have still quite some loons left to make sure that this is going to be a triple. So yeah, guys, um, we have one more attack to go and this one is not going to be a Zap Lalo because <laughs> I wanted to have a couple of different attacks in this one. And it is going to be a Queen Charge Hybrid. And to be honest right now, uh, you can do you can attack so many bases with like Zeb Lalo, but still Queen Charge Hybrid is out there like it's still out there. So it's still strong, it's still viable. And we take a look at this number nine um, of our first opponent. And we're getting into this with the Queen Charge Hybrid. And this is actually another qualifier base. So I think at least I think this is another qualifier base. Um, there were so many qualifier bases out, out there, it was, it was insane. Um, what I'm doing over here, I feel like this Yeti Blimp got a lot of value because, well, you're just doing the Yeti Blimp into the, into the Inferno Tower compartment, you're luring out the Clan Castle, you're getting rid of the Inferno Tower. Just overall really nice value um, considering that you had not to invest too many things. Now the Headhunter is coming out, I'm getting rid of the Headhunter nice and early, so far so good. Now my queen is getting slowly but surely into the range of the clan castle of the lava hound using one wizard on the top side to make sure that the funnel is created and my queen is actually stepping to the left side. The next step for my plan is okay even though I see this hole on the base over here and I don't know if you guys saw this as well but there's a hole on the base actually right in the wall um, but I didn't want to abuse it I just wanted to wall break in over here wall break in again and then as you guys know over my last couple of videos, you guys know I love the synergy in between of the queen and the hybrid. Which means I really like it when the queen is forcing the hybrid in and the hybrid is forcing the queen in. This synergy in my opinion is really strong because you're splitting damage and obviously you are able to kind of save a couple of troop space because you do not have to invest into extra final troops. So as soon as the town is going down, I'm starting off with my hybrid. And the hybrid troops are getting rid of this arch tower and the wizard tower to make sure that the queen is actually stepping inside and staying inside. So meanwhile we have the hybrid and the hybrid is now getting pushed into this bottom side because my queen is slowly but surely taking out all of those defenses over here which is creating kind of like a really nice dead zone or like pathing overall for my hybrid troops. Now the rage spell, I think I could have placed it a bit deeper to be honest. But still, now the rage to make sure that my troops are getting through the back end one last heal spell, even though it is looking not too good for me right now, I think one thing which I always like completely like underestimate is how many mines are still there. Like take a look at how fast those um, those buildings are dropping with all of those miners. And then once again, there are even more miners at the bottom side. So my queen is still alive. Royal Chairman has to use her ability. She's going to die, but still there's a couple of more Hawk Riders going to finish up the uh, off the job. We still have the queen ability which we are using right now and then obviously the minus like I said from the bottom side. So this is going to be another triple and well a non zap Lalo attack. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. That's it for, day, uh, for today. Like I said there's going to be more um, videos of this season as well because I did some really, really nice I would say really nice um, queen charge zap hybrid attacks and I will obviously do a video on that uh, for sure and well let's hope for the best. We should be top 4 as long as INTZ is not getting like a 44 star or more. Uh, so yeah, let's, let's, let's wait for that. I think we're going to know that in around like 20 hours or something like that from now. So yeah, let's wait for it. Let's see how the results would look like. And guys, thank you so much for watching. I will see you guys back tomorrow for another one. And well, guys, see you then, until then, and bye bye.